One of the things that we do at LTC is finger spelling. And I make one of these videos, and you know, finger spelling really doesn't change from year to year. And sometimes I reuse the video, but every once in a while I feel like it's a time to make a fresh one. So I'm going to go through the ABCs and the one, two, threes and get you to where you can finger spell. Now, some of the things that I want to do before we even start getting to the how to form the letters is to tell you something about finger spelling. When you learn to read, you learn to read to start with by picking it up and sounding out the word, the letters, and then you attach those sounds together and then they form words. And then from that point on, you don't ever see the letters, you see only the words as you're reading. If you think that through, you'll know that that's true. The same thing is true when you're writing. When you're writing, you don't sit down and go T-H-E. You do the. You're writing out words. You're not writing out letters. So as a result, things are read and things are written with concepts, with words as opposed to letters. That's really, really important when you're learning to sign and finger spell because you do not finger spell letters. When you learned to write, you learned how to form the letters, but then you made them into words. When you learn how to finger spell, you learn how to form the letters, but you finger spell words. Okay? And this is really important. When you go to introduce yourself, it's not my name is P-A-U-L. It's my name is Paul. I fingerspelled the word. And when you're practicing your fingerspelling, you practice fingerspelling words. Okay? So, some of the things that are traps for us hearing people as we're doing this is we want to do things by letter. Hello, my name is Paul. It needs to be the word, not P-A-U-L. Never say the letters. If I spelled everything out to you as I was speaking to you, you would just lose your mind. So would the deaf. Finger spelling is almost like writing on a page of paper that's invisible in front of you. Okay? Consider it as a book. All right, you're in a book, you're reading your book, and you're in a car on a bumpy road, and the book is doing like this. Is it easy to read? No, it's not. So, when you're finger spelling, do not bounce your signs. You don't know. Hello, my name is P A U L. Do not bounce. All right? Think of your elbow as stuck on top of a pedestal or something, and it can't go down. If you're teaching, it's okay to come behind the student and hold on to their elbow, or to put your hand under it, and help them to, to feel when they are bouncing, because it seems to be something that's natural. It happens so often I, I, it, with so many kids that it must be something that's natural. So it may be unnatural, you need to help them become natural. Your hand needs to be near your mouth. Okay, in sign language there's something called total communication, which means you finger spell the words and you say them at the same time. That's the best way of doing it. It is okay to finger spell them and then say them after, if that's necessary. The best way, though, is to say them and fingerspell them at the same time. For the deaf person to be able to see your mouth and read your lips and your hand at the same time, though, and I don't know how they do that, but they do, your hand needs to be level with your lips and it needs to be not way out forward, not way out back, but just a little bit forward. You might be able to see your hand in your peripheral vision, okay? Do not look at your hand. You don't say, my name is 
Paul, okay? You are talking to the person in front of you. You don't talk to your hand. This is not a puppet, okay? You're not having a conversation with your hand. Keep your eyes forward. Also, something else we want to do is we want to, to take and do what I call sky writing, where my name is Paul, and I kind of space the letters out. Don't space the letters out. Keep it all in one spot, okay? Because the deaf are going to read this not as letters, but as word. And what I do, they don't even see the letters. They just know that that combination of, of movements is the word Paul. Okay? So keep it all in one spot. Another thing that it's, is, in the one minor exception to that is if there are two letters. Okay? My last name is L E, right? L E M M O N S. All right? I said the letters because I was talking about the specific spelling of my word, all right? But the way I would spell it, all right? Lemons. I did MM. If it's an LL, you know, it might look like this. There would be a little shift to the right for some letters. TT. What are some other uh, letters that are doubled? Uh, MM, LL. Anyway, MM is easy because it just kind of flaps. Uh, LL would be one next, but the, it's not LL, it's little, all right? And it's to the left or the right. Uh, sky writing, okay, and also you don't throw the signs at people. My name is not, all right? Some reason or another, we have it in our mind, or the kids have in their mind these letters that have to be emphasized. Keep your hands still, all right? And what is, and I think that's just about it. There's probably some more bad habits, but if you get those gone, if you just, so somebody once told me when you're a banker, you don't learn how what all the counterfeit bills look like. You learn what a real bill looks like and everything else looks wrong, okay? In finger spelling, this is how you do it. Keep your elbows straight, keep your hands faced and forward, do not sky right, you know, keep it all in one place, all right? Okay. With that said, here are the numbers first. And I'm going to go to the numbers first because one, they're simple, and two, I always get, I frequently get carried away at the end thinking, huh, I'm done, and then I forget to do the signs for the, for the numbers. So, one, how old are you? I am one. That's, everybody knows one. How old are you? I'm two. That's easy. Everybody knows two. All right. How's that different from V? Well, context tells you, all right? Two, three, now here it gets a little bit different. We usually do three like this. The deaf do three like this, and there's a really good reason for it, and I'll get to it in about three numbers, okay? Three, use your thumb. Four we know, pretty easy. Five we know, that's, that's easy. And this is why we can't do three for that, because this is six. Six, seven, eight, nine. And what you're doing is just touching the top of your finger to the top of your thumb. All right? And six is littler than nine, so it's on the little finger. Get the memory aid there, okay? Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now there's a whole lot more numbers, and ten is just shaking like a little egg. There's a whole lot more numbers. There's the teens and the 20s, and there's, you know, big numbers. And at LTC, you're going to have to sign the number, your, your, your participant ID number, okay? You don't, if it, your participant ID is 20014, you don't have to say 2004. You can if you want to, that's okay. But you, all we're asking for is, Two zero zero four, okay, or what did I say? Two zero zero one four, whatever number I came up with. And if you can't remember your number, it's okay to look at your name tag and see what it is. All right, that's all right. Okay, those are the numbers. ABCs. 
Hey, and I'm going to give you a little memory aid to help with these. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not. It's up, you know, we'll see. A is like an apple, here's the stem, okay? B, B is back off, okay? You know, you don't actually move it out. I'm, B is like that. C is the letter C. If you turn it sideways, you can see it, right? But all the signs are fainted, are faced forward. So C, A, B, C, D is the letter D. Okay, D and F get mixed up all the time. If you're mixing up your D's and your F's, you're in a class of people that is huge, all right? D, the way I remember it is, it's the stick and the ball. That makes up the letter D in the lower case, okay? But again, it's facing out to the person you're signing to. E, every finger is on your thumb. Some people do E like this. They are both correct. So if you do E like this, that's great. If you do E like that, that's just as great. You know, there's not one better than the other. But e, every finger is on your thumb is my easy way to remember. F, okay, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, all right? I don't know whether that's, anyway, fine. The fingers up here are together, it's not apart, they're together, and it makes a little circle here, okay? All right, and it's really easy to figure out why that's different, why that's easy to, to mix up with D, because D is like that, and F is like that. All right, G, two ways to do letter G, like a gun, okay, which is done in 49 states, or in Texas it's done G, like how do you much like grits? I like grits just a little bit, okay? And guess where I learned my signs? I'm in Texas, so I learned them in, well, I learned, not in Texas, but I learned them in Texas, so G. H, half your fingers are laying down. Not all of them, half of them are laying down. And this is one of those ones where you show the knuckles. H, I, looks like the little letter I, if you can imagine a, a dot right up here at the top. And what looks like an I with a tail is a J, okay? So just putting a J, that's a J. K, this one requires a little bit of dexterity, and once you get to where you're doing it, it's easy to do, but it's hard to explain. Make a peace sign, okay? Take your center finger, move it forward a little bit, and then take your thumb and touch your first knuckle. K, knuckle, all right? All right, so I'm getting a little wild. <laughs> knuckle, K. And it kind of looks like that. And if you can look at it, you got, a, you got your K there. L, looks like the letter L. M, I kind of showed you that with my name a little bit. M, in cursive, which I think they're still teaching in some schools, M has three humps. So, one, two, three fingers over your thumb. And you don't have to cramp it, all right? Everything in signing is comfortable. If you're straining your muscles and your blood vessels are picking out, you're working too hard. N has two humps in it in cursive, so two fingers over your thumb. L-M-N-O, O, o looks like the letter O. P is K, and you bend your wrist to pick something up, all right? P, Q, I really don't have a good, I, somebody needs to come up with a good mnemonic, memory mnemonic for Q, but it's a G, bent over. So P and Q are both bent over with the wrist. R, you wrap one finger around the other, and the way I spell, R-A-P spells wrap. All right, R. S, make a fist, okay? But don't do it this way. Do it with your thumb pointing at the person. S, T, tuck your thumb under your finger, okay? No, yeah, tuck your thumb under your finger. U, 
like uh, the Scouts. U V looks like the letter V. W looks like the letter W. X is just a hook in the air. Now I do my daily exercises, but you don't really do that for signing. You didn't do X. All right. Y, if you look at the whole arm, looks like the letter Y. And Z, you just draw a Z in the air. And I've seen it done with the forefinger, and I've seen it done with the little finger. Either way is right. Those are your ABCs. So now what do you do next? You start practicing spelling your name. You get it to the point where that you can say, you can spell your name without thinking about the letters because you're spelling them as words and you've trained your fingers to make Paul. I don't think of my letters at all when I do my name. Lemons. I don't think of those letters at all. Those just fly because I've done it so many times. Start with your name. Next, go to your song. You're going to have to fingerspell the title of your song. Fingerspell those words and get them to where they flow freely from your fingers without thinking about it. And then start making little sentences. So, my Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I love thee. Okay? And get practicing saying the words with your fingerspelling. That's it. So, good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing you there at LTC. Fingerspell well.